Welcome to the channel, folks. Plunkers and Classics. I just got back last night. Well, early this morning, about three in the morning, from the Hot Rod Power Tour. I left all these little critters here. Uh, that's Kitty. That's her four. Now, the update before I left, you know, there was four kitties and a Mustang, and uh, two of them were missing, and then one of them, I think, ended up over here. It's a little bit skittish. Uh, it's underneath the car right now. And then there's there was two in the Mustang for three or four days. Now, when I just got back, there's only one, so I don't know where the other one went, and then the other missing one before that. I don't know if the mother took it off to train it for surviving, who knows. But anyway, these, these kittens, I put a bunch of food. I put three or four big bowls like this with water. See, there's still water left. Two big old bowls of food right underneath the car, the Nomad here. And they were empty when I got back this morning. So that's what they were eating. They weren't, you know, plus Kitty, you know, she... She caught about a six foot snake there a while back, so. And they look well fed. Of course, they were meowing. Uh, I've been feeding them. I checked my P.O. box before I left for the Hot Rod Power Tour. And there's a big old package in there from uh, Exeter. So I wanna thank Exeter. A big old bulging bag, and I was like, what the hell is this? And he had about 10 or 11 cans of cat food and a can of uh, Alpo for puppy. <laughs> so he was, uh, he said, here's for the kitties and uh, give the, the one-eyed one extra portion. Well, the, the one-eyed one, did he ended up having both his eyes. A couple of them ended up with scratches around her eyes. So I think when they were fighting for food, they scratch each other or the mother bites them or something. Because, you know, they're struggling for food back there. I give them food, but... Okay, so that's the kitty situation. These all seem to be okay, except for one's missing now. So, I don't, you know... I don't know where it is. But they didn't starve to death. Okay, so I went on three legs of the Hot Rod Power Tour. Went to Memphis, Nashville, and uh, Birmingham, Alabama. And I skipped out on Pensacola and Atlanta and just came home. So it was way too hot, brutally hot, over about 100 degrees every day. And I brought puppy. So then my AC crapped out in the Nova. So I didn't have AC. So anyway, had a good time. Made three videos for you guys. One's actually still uploading. It's taken forever to upload. Um close to 1700 miles I put on her with absolutely no problems whatsoever none other than uh, the uh, passenger side rear was rubbing right on the way there rubbing the wheel lip there and I had to bang that in didn't do no damage but it was hitting it was hitting in here I just banged that in and it didn't rub after that. So it was a good trip. Got about 20 miles to the gallon. Uh, didn't overheat at all. Lots of people were having overheating problems. Not me. This thing was great. But it was just too hot uh, for me and the dog. So we came home early. But anyway, I'm glad I went. Did three legs of it. And... Uh, Hope you enjoyed them videos. If you haven't watched them, just click back the last three videos. I got day one, two, and three. Okay, so now I'm home. Let's get started on the Nomad. Now the temperature here is, uh, just watch the news. It's, 
it's actually see it's actually not bad now there's relatively little humidity here compared to Memphis Nashville and Birmingham just you know there, it's humidity makes a lot of difference it makes you sweat just sweats out your t-shirt and everything uh, here not so so at night time it's really just thick the humidity at, at night it's the worst here it's not too bad it's getting down to I think it, it's still it's still like 90 degrees at night there uh, here it's it's gonna be in the 90s all week in fact 99 tomorrow 97 the next day and so on but at least it gets down to 73 to 75 at night and no humidity so right now I can be out here and I'm not sweating my balls off so that's what I'm going to have to start doing. And of course, early in the morning is nice too. You know, as soon as the sun comes up, about 6 till 10 or noon, that's when I'll be working, okay? Early mornings, and then like right now before the sun goes down. Okay, so this one's still nursing a little bit. Okay, so I'm kind of glad to be back. Um, so anybody that, uh, wondering about my cars, no, oh, you just let them sit there and collect dust. Nope. I just drove this one 1,700 miles cross country, so, <laughs> um, I wouldn't be afraid to do it in really any of my cars. I mean, with a little bit of work, like the, the orange Nova still needs alignment. And of course, you know, these, these tires here are off the Chevelle, new tires and rims. So, uh, you know, as long as you got good tires and a little minor stuff, any of these would make it. Like, I'd see, I, I wanted to take this car, but I didn't build it. I, I traded it or traded for it. But it's friggin' nice, and it drives great. It's all restored. Well, it was restored a few years ago, and there's no question it would make it. But I wanted a car that I actually built on the channel, and that's this one. Plus, this one gets better gas mileage. Okay, but yeah, I could hop in that one. Could hop in the vet. I seen a bunch of people in these vets there, and it's crazy because there's no room. I mean, the newer ones are a little bit better with the the hatch. You can fit a suitcase or something back there, but not this one. You can't fit nothing back there. Just you and a passenger. And maybe a carton of cigarettes in the back. That's about it. And I can't believe, I, I don't know how many I've seen. Ten of them, at least. Maybe they were day guys going there in the daytime. There's no way I could take that. It, it holds no, nothing. Okay, and I wanted to take the Chevelle, too. but So anyway... All these cars will get their chance to go on short or long trips. Okay, so don't say they're just collecting dust. All they need is to be hosed down, hop in them, maybe boost them, and hop in it and go. Okay, so where are we at on the restoration of the 68 Chevelle Nomad? wagon oh uh i think come a line coming in i seen a 69 i don't I, I can't remember what year it was it was a malibu wagon and i think that's it of of this style um there was a lot of wagons there it, they're becoming very popular you know whether they were you know there's an old 60 something ford with the with the wood grain on it looked pretty good uh anyway there's a lot of wagons a lot of full size i've seen a bunch of full size impala type wagons but i think only one of this and of course it was it was a malibu it wasn't a nomad so if and to tell you the truth my nova here i didn't see it i seen one of them same thing coming in coming in line as i was going out and he waved at me i waved back at him there was only one of them novas do you believe it <coughs> um 
Of course, I didn't get to, get to see everything. The 74 GTO, I seen a, about a 73 or 4 Ventura. It wasn't a GTO, but it was it was nice. Uh, I seen a bunch of 70 to 72 Le Mans's GTOs. Not, I mean, more GTOs than anything. Can't remember if I specifically seen a 70 Le Mans. Uh, plenty of the 68 to 72 Novas and seven, up to 74. There's a bunch of 73, 74s. Tons and tons of 69, 68, 67, 66, 72 Chevelles. All year Chevelles. That's probably the most popular car there. Out of the old cars, you know, there was a lot of people with uh, newer stuff. Challengers and Mustangs and uh, Camaros and, you know, I'd, they're not really hot, I mean, they're hot rods, but they're, I mean, I just called everything there a hot rod, including mine. Mine's not a hot rod because it's a six banger, but it looks like a hot rod. Nobody knew the difference. I didn't have my hood up. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, that's... I kind of wanted to, if it wasn't so hot, I'd walk around more and get some more ideas, see how these people were doing up these wagons. I'd look at them more closely, but it was too hot, especially for puppy to walk around on the concrete and the asphalt. So I didn't get much ideas um, to, you know, had a little custom stuff and custom areas on this. Okay, so yeah. This car, well, even before I went to the Hot Rod Power Tour, this car will be probably one of the most recognizable cars on YouTube. I'm not a big guy on YouTube, but I'm just saying, uh, when somebody sees this, they'll know, they'll know what it, you know, that they won't forget it. Because like I said, it's going black with a flame job, yellow, orange, red. I wanted to see more flame jobs, I've seen a few. But this one's just going to be the best. It's going to be the best flame job. The old style going down. Okay. And then, of course, the custom touches with the sunroof and all that. Pe people will not forget it. And they'll have the Nomad emblems on it. Okay. So, that's the direction we're going. And it's going to be on... You know, I'm still not a sure on the timeline on this, guys. It's probably going to be... Uh, next year six months um, probably longer than six months everything is all delayed and stuff now really bad before you could get anything even with other people having delays i could pretty much you know guess a lot of people they'll they'll go to a you know ss396.com and order something and so oh, it's a three month wait but you can go on ebay and buy it and it's in stock somewhere else but they're waiting three to four months to get it so so what I'm saying is that now everybody's out of stuff and it's a big delay you know China had that they had their COVID outbreak and 40 percent of their production has stopped I don't know if it's restarted yet or not. It may have. I don't know. I haven't really heard much updates. The news is all, all on Russia and stuff. So, uh, so that's one big delay. And then of course everything else, the shipping and and the price of everything going through the roof. So what I'm saying is the engine, uh, the transmission, the front end parts. Uh, if I go an LS motor, there's, you got to buy a lot of stuff, guys. You know, LS, LS, uh, people all oh, put an LS in it. Well, you got to buy motor mounts. You got to buy uh, a harness. You got to buy fuel pumps and the special tanks and uh, all kinds of stuff. And all that stuff takes time to get, too. I'm going to try to do it without any of that, but if I come across an LS. <coughs> so I can't I can't give everybody a timeline on it. If I had all the parts here, it'd be no problem. Okay? And we're going to get as we're going to get like 80% of it done except for the the engine. See, that's the thing. Even way back 
I don't know, a couple of months ago, there's a three month delay on that motor I was talking about from AutoZone. 1800 bucks and buy a long block engine but it's a three month wait i don't want to order it right now i, I don't like ordering anything until i'm just about ready for it so i could be almost done with this just needing a motor and i'll still have to wait three months so that's why it's going to be a while but anyway this type of car that's going to go on the hot rod power tour hopefully next year and it's going to go to drag and drive events at rocky mountain drag thing the midwest drag and drive i like those events much better than uh just going to car shows and stuff and the other thing i don't really like is trailer queens if a guy had just driven like i just drove my nova 1700 miles if somebody can drive the car that far and then drive it to the next event and the next event that's that's what I like, those type of car events. Okay, so that's what this car is going to be. It's just going to be hitting the road more than when it was brand new. It's just going to be constantly on the highway driving probably three, four, five trips a year. <coughs> okay, enough rambling, but that's where we're at now. Just to give everybody an update. Okay, when I started on... Uh, last episode, well, a few episodes, we got the sunroof in, and then the buckets in the last episode. Bucket seats, and what I'm deciding to do is putting the retractable shoulder belts. Uh, let me get on here. On here. Okay. Um... Okay, see how that comes off there. Now, from the Explorer that I got the seats from last episode, I cut this area out here. See from the Explorer and welded it on there. And that is for what I just pulled off. Okay. That slides in there, slides down like that, then that bolt bolts into there, okay? This, I haven't got this far yet, that far, but this bolts to the bottom, and then this is the brace from the Explorer. So this goes in, goes in like that, and bolts to this right there and then this this here bolts to this bolt okay so that bolt there and then this this bolt there or I can use the uh, nomad one which is right there and then there's a little deal that goes in the middle and it just kind of it's just a little brace that holds that holds this more more flush against there Okay, so I started, I cut this out, started trimming it, and I got to cut, I got to cut an area out down here, and then weld this in, okay, just like I did this piece here. The trim, I'm not sure what we're going to use, part of the Explorer, part of the Nomad original, I don't know, uh, I'm not going to worry about that now. <coughs> So somebody commented, well, why put in shoulder belts? It's not required. Uh, I bought, I got a brand new set of, a set of eight, I think it is, lap, uh, regular lap belts. Um, and I'll be using, what, three of them for the back. I still got to, I'll pop this back seat out here. And there's a, I guess three seat belts. I'll, I'll put in the new ones so this back seat's just going to have three lap belts in it and just kind of hanging down. Or I'm not even going to be using this back seat, but it'll be in there just in case I do. Uh, the Explorer, I'm sure, has something like this up on that pillar, and I could do the same thing 
as I'm doing to the front and make shoulder belts for the back, but um, I'm not going, I'm not worried about it. Nobody's going to be back there except maybe puppy. Okay. Um, these buckets here have the built in seat belt here. See, it's built right into this seat. And then the, uh, this hair will click right into it. Okay, so yeah, it's true. This this car did not have any shoulder belts. Some of these old cars had uh, ones that go up. See, I'm not stuck on the. It's just a. Oh, maybe it was. Maybe it was here. No, that's not big enough. I don't, I didn't have it, I don't remember taking it off, but some of these old cars will have a lap belt up here, and it'll bolt in, a big bolt, and then it'll come across and have some little chrome things, and it just kind of folds in there, and then if you want to use it, you pull it down, and then you pull it down, and it'll have another, another buckle down here, and you buckle that in. You buckle your lap belt, and if you want to use your shoulder belt, optional at the time, you could plug it in. Okay, this one, like I said, didn't come with it, but some cars do. Uh, some, I think like my 672 Nova, I think I left it off. The main reason is the laws may change, uh, are different in different states. And I think I read years ago, if your car came equipped with the shoulder belts, you must use them according to, you know, the new seatbelt laws. You know, you get a big ticket for not wearing a seatbelt in just about every state, every state, I believe. So the problem is I didn't want to, in an old car, I didn't want to use the top belt because it's a pain in the ass. you got to sit there and self-adjust it and all that stuff, and it's just uncomfortable. It's, it doesn't retract. It's just, and it, you know, and you got to fold it back up here or have it laying down on the floor getting trapped in every time you open the door. That kind of a pain in the ass. This one I don't think came with it, so I don't have to worry about it. But if you get a cop, comes up beside you and doesn't see a shoulder belt on you, he's going to stop you. Because they're, they're not very bright, most of them. So they're not going to realize. The first thing you oh, I stopped you. That you're giving them a reason, reason to stop you by not having a shoulder belt on, even if the car doesn't have one. So he stops you. Uh, you know, I drive, I, I got insurance and valid license and all that stuff. But that's easy. Oh, let me see your license. Let me see your insurance. Well, why'd you stop me? Well, you know, we're in a shoulder belt. Well, the car didn't come with a shoulder belt. Oh, well. so you're giving them a reason to stop you and harassing you and try to find something to fuck with you. It's better. I love the South, but I'll, I'll tell you, there, there's some real asshole cops down here. Mississippi, going through Mississippi home was the worst. I mean, every mile there was a cop SUV in the medium waiting for speeders. It's just a, a speed trap. The whole state was like that. Uh, the Hot Rod Power Tour, a lot of people were getting stopped. Don't know what for. They could have been, they could have been idiots and burning tires or what, but you don't want to give the cops a reason to stop you, okay? So... <coughs> Uh, and plus it's safer. So I'm going to have these nice retractable seat belts, and they can just retract back up there when you're not using it, if, even if you don't want to use it. But you might have a passenger in there that want, wants to use it and feel safer. Okay, and I usually, you know, I'm used to wearing them. I, I hated them when the seat belt laws first came into effect. I never used to wear them. I've got, I had umpteen seat belt uh tickets over the years in my younger days but anyway i kind of used to it and uh okay so and of course this is all in one this is the lap and the shoulder belt so you know it's easy lift it over click boom you're done you don't have to be fucking around with them adjustable ones there especially when different people get in there you, the, you get, with them old style you got to sit there and, and uh, self-adjust it for each person that gets in there. 
and then you want to retract your seat back well then you got to adjust it again it's just a pain in the ass so anyway it's going to be a lot of a lot of extra labor to do these uh ones but you know i think it'll be worth it in the end like i said this is a i'm going to be keeping it it's going to be a cruising car if i was just if i was just fixing up to sell it i wouldn't bother with all this stuff i wouldn't bother with the sunroof or the seat belt so the all that okay so guys it's been going on 25 minutes now but um i'm not going to get much work done today oh so what happened was i was right in the middle of welding that seat belt and uh my welder stopped what happened is this little this little wheel here when you push the trigger that turns the wheel and powers the wire through the deal well it, it stopped spinning uh, I took the cover off and everything it's a big sealed unit in there two electrical things and it clicks but this thing does not spin and don't know that it always jammed up it's not jammed up I take the wire off and just have it freewheeling it's supposed to turn when you click the trigger it doesn't so what do you do I guess I'm gonna have to go down to Harbor Freight in the morning buy another welder they used to be about 100 I think they're probably 150 now something like that uh, you can buy I bought the last one before this off eBay I think for a hundred bucks delivered but that's been a couple of years ago I doubt they're that much anyway just be faster if I get to spend an extra 50 bucks at Harbor Freight I'll go down there in the morning I gotta get all groceries and everything anyway and I'll get another welder so what I'm gonna do is finish this one side and then I'm gonna come back and I'll take it to the Explorer and how I cut out them pieces and I'll, I'll we'll do the driver's side together and uh, I'll show you every little step of the way in case you want to do it it's not that hard just a little time consuming um, if you want to do this do do this type of job okay so I'll be back in the morning Okay, guys, I went and bought a, another welder, the exact same one as the old one. Uh, it was 149 bucks. So, they didn't have any record of me buying this one. Uh, I'm not sure why I may not have used my Harbor Freight membership card type thing and just told them to just ring it up for cash because, you know, Sometimes at the checkout, say, oh, what, what's your card number? What's your name? What's your phone number? Blah, blah, blah. I said, ah, just ring it up for cash. So anyway, she didn't know whether I had the warranty thing on it, and I think that's only good for a year anyway. And I know it's probably a year and a half old, two years old. I don't know. Anyway, hopefully this one will work. Um, so I can weld that one side in, but let's grab my sawzall that's how i got them pieces out let's go down to the explorer and we'll get that i have to come back for more stuff show you what i'm taking out in case you want to do this to a i don't know whether I'm, i'll title this uh put in modern seat belts type thing just uh, I don't know it's a lot safer to have that shoulder belt old cars you know they are built like tanks but newer cars what you doing mama cat uh, newer cars are made to crush like an accordion and make you safe as long as you're strapped in but Okay, let me Okay, this is what I cut out. It was easier for me just to cut out that whole section and then just cut out what I needed once I got back to the uh, up to the shop. Then this is how I cut this bottom one out here. 
okay so that's what we're going to do with this side and see here's the bottom plastic i know they're let's see how they go yeah they go in like that and they got that that weather stripping that actually goes goes across there whereas in the nomad the trim the trim goes over top so but anyway we might use that where the other piece is it's probably in here um so we may use that maybe cut it up or something to to put some trim over top of it later and i did have to take off the uh it's got an old shit handle there i thought that would be pretty cool to put in there but yeah that's what i need i need a little eight millimeter it goes there and here i think for the old shit handle and it has old shit handle here too be kind of neat to have them but that's uh, not necessary. Oh, here it is. There's the handle here that went went up there like that. Or it's I don't know what it is. Maybe it's to help you get in and out of the car or something. Okay, there was a couple comments about putting that back this back seat in the Nomad, and it would be nice if I was planning on you know having passengers a lot, but I don't. The only person that's going to be back there is either puppy, but she likes sitting in the front seat. But if she wants to take a nap, she can go in the back and then haul and stuff. So I don't really plan on transporting a lot of people around, but I don't know. I might take it out. I'll take it out and set it in there and see what it looks like or something. I don't know. It's just the back seat of that Nova or the Nomad. Uh, it's flat and it's kind of like part the back part of the back seat is part of the floor but yeah you can see this has the shoulder belts here too for for the back seats and I'm not going going through that trouble of putting them in for the back seats okay so let me take see here's the uh, takes this torque spit right here take that one out and then you can take the covers off and then there's another bolt in behind there and then one up there so let me let me take that off and I'll, I'll be back show you step by step how I'm do, gonna do it okay got the bottom cover off I'm gonna take this one bolt there that's all that holds that in and it's actually gonna a little slit like this it just hooks in that little slit right there and then bolt, just one bolt mainly holds it and this is just a little uh just a little plastic clip on this just to keep this towards the pillar more okay and that just clips on like that and you can just slide that out through that hole there like that okay like I said we may use these I don't know okay then uh, you just take this one bolt uh, one bolt off here and then the thing that uh, it will slide up and out you just take that whole unit out of there and then what we want to do well let me get them off and I'll I'll be back okay guys you just pop that uh that's got a little slit right there too this little keeper thing so that slides in like that wow slides in like that and then the little clip goes into that hole so that's what we'll have to make on the other pillar i don't really think it's worth cutting this out and welding it on there we'll drill a hole and make a slit okay and then this top bolt here and then this just slides out like that see the end just slides in one bolt so that's it that's it for the seat belt assembly and to that's 
Uh, that's I guess I busted part of that. Okay, so and then these are we're gonna take those two little eight millimeters out, get that out of the way, and then we'll cut this off. And like I said, what we want to do is cut this just like I kind of showed you on the other side. We want to get this little area here so everything slides in and bolts up into the Nomad. So we'll cut this whole section out, and then once I get up to the shop, I'll use my cutoff wheel, cut it off, weld it on. Okay, same with this bottom piece here. We'll get some cutters, get this wiring out of the way. And uh, we want to cut it, cut it right along the bottom here, and uh, up around here. And like I said, it slides, slides in here. So we'll just get that. So the only way I can do it is with the sawzall out here. I ain't got an electrical cord long enough. Um, so let me cut that out and I'll be back. Okay, guys. I cut that out. Let's cut her all the way around the edges. So we're just going to cut trim this plate out and weld it I'll bring that up to the shop and then the top piece I just cut cut like that just cut it out so we'll bring that up take off these two bolts here and trim this out okay so I'll meet you back at the shop okay guys well, let's go over to the passenger side I want to just get that driver's side stuff cut out before it got dark kind of working late afternoons at night Okay, so like I mentioned before, I, 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 you can see where I trimmed that out and welded it on there. Okay, now the bottom piece I haven't got got to yet. So this is where I get in there like that, bolts to that. That little thing slides right into that hole like that. Just so what we want to do is cut, using this as a template, we got these, this brace, we got this brace where the two bolts go. So we will kind of want to center it. So we're going to cut out, cut out a little bit here for this, and then we'll cut out, and we'll cut out that center right in there and then uh and then weld it we have to make sure we get a hole for that little slot and we want it in want it in something like that kind of centered in there okay so let me get uh let me get this all trimmed up and get this ready do a bunch of grinding on it get it all ready to weld on there real good so I'll be back. Okay, guys. I cut that area out there. I don't even know if you can see. It's getting dark out. Basically, I'm going to go in like that. Put some uh, vice grips and clamps around there and weld her all up solid. And then. Go into that slot there, like that, and bolt in the bottom there. So we'll, we'll weld it all up and uh, spray paint it black. Prime and paint it. Same with here. I gotta do some more welding. So let me get uh, all this done, and I'll be back with a flashlight, probably or a drop light. <laughs> To show you okay it's in the morning guys pretty much got it all welded in uh, yeah there's not a lot welded on here but it's the strength is for down here that's where you need it right along in there so I'm gonna just gonna uh, spray paint it black and uh, hook up the seat belts 
so I'll be back when I get that done. Oh, and I got the, uh, oh, I got these cut out for the other side. The driver's side. So I cut them out of all this. Is that... Okay, so I'll be back. Okay, guys. Got it in. That's it there. You just grab this, put your seatbelt in like you would a modern car, and we're done. Up like that. Okay, let me pull the seat back. Whoops. Okay. Now you just grab it. And there it is. Just bolts in. That one stays loose there. Uh, this one, instead of drilling a slot and everything, I just put a screw right there. That's it. Just kind of holds that, holds that, so it doesn't flop around out here. But uh, yeah, that's it. Now, I did. Here's the. Uh, here's this piece here out of the. Explore that went went across here. So I don't know if I can use some of that or not, but I'll worry about the trim and everything later. Okay, that's that side done, and uh, just gonna do the driver's side. So let's take a look at that. I got two, uh, two pieces. I got to hook up a battery and pull the seat forward. Okay, we got this wire in the way. Uh, that is actually goes up for the interior light. Okay, so this one ain't gonna fit. Well, I mean, I could put it somewhere like that, but we got the uh, front one done. So I may use them wires and hook up a couple lights over here or something. Not this particular light, but some newer ones. And uh, like put one there and run some wires across and put one, put one on the other side. Maybe, I'll decide later. Okay, but in the meantime, yeah, we can disconnect them. And this one will go in here, like that. But we gotta cut out. See, we gotta cut out a section there for that to go in. And then as, I forget how I had that. Oh yeah. I think this will be okay. This will be enough to get that bolt through so it goes there to there so we just cut out a little bit here and then grind her all down grind it all down here and weld that there okay then we got the bottom piece and like I said we'll we'll unplug that and put that in the middle and then cut out, trace that, and cut out all this here for the retractor thing to fit in there. And weld all that on. So I'll be back when I got all that cut out. And, and this cut out and ground, and I'll put a clamp on there and show you how to set it in there. Uh, the new welder's working great. It wasn't defective or nothing like that, so that's good. Uh, okay, so I'll be back. Okay, guys, we just got one. I only need one clamp on there to hold it. 
and I got this all cut out down here. Like that. I'm just going to put a couple of vice grips right there and there and weld it. Once I get it tacked on there, I'll, I'll bang this flush with this and weld it across there. Okay, well, I'll be back. Okay, guys. It's this side done. It's welded in there. This bottom piece is welded in. And uh, spray painted it black with some black uh, primer and then some paint on it. So, we let that dry. Not well, it's getting to be pretty hot out. It'll probably come back when it starts to uh, at dusk. We come back, we'll put that on. And then, uh, see if I can found, find my, I think I bought eight seat belts. Uh, brand new, just regular, you know, lap belts. And uh, we'll, we'll put the uh, ones in the back here for the back seat. But anyway, I'll be back later. Okay, guys. I got this one all bolted in. It's all bolted in too. Okay, got the seat hooked up. So we'll roll that back. Okay, now you just grab the seat belt. Let's get this out of the way. Grab the seat belt. Just like that. And there you go. That's it. Okay, now these are the seat belts I bought. See, I was originally going to use these uh, two for the front, two for the back. So that's how they work. See, and the thing is, if you want to adjust them to fit snug, you get a. Of course, this one's probably not as bad as the, the factory ones, especially when the factory ones are 50 years old. Very hard to get this adjustable. Okay, so I guess we're going to put in, I guess, three for the back, in case there's ever three passengers. But let me pop the bottom of that back seat out, and uh, the, the seat belts have already been cut. It was cut before I bought it. Um, but I think I rounded out. I think there were some bolts missing. I rounded some up. So let me pop this bottom, and we'll see what we need to do. I'll be back. Okay, guys. See here where they were cut. One there. One there, one there, and one there. You can tell that one is a single one, and there's a double one for the middle seat. Same with this one. So, yeah, we're gonna make it so it's uh, one, two, three, three seat belts. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna buzz these out with a impact and put the other ones in. And then we'll uh, we'll stick the seat there back down. I have to take it back out here later for the carpet, but I want to get all the I want to get all that front done first, uh, dash area and everything, heater core out, all that stuff, and fix the water that's coming in through there. I want to get all that fixed before we put in the carpet and I'll take replace all this weather stripping. But then I gotta paint it all before I do that so anyway let me get the seat belts on we'll take a look at that okay guys I got them in there they've been in there 54 years they were uh, pretty tight okay and there's one two and three we'll stick the back seat in there 
pull them up through. But yeah, that's them. Um, these ones here, I was just gonna put the bolts in there, but some of them are like this for here. So we're gonna tape them up. I got some aluminum type tape. Um, let's put that over there, over these here. That one I tried to drive in there and it stripped. So uh, cover all them up before before I put the carpet in. But anyway, we'll find something else to do. I think that's it for all the seat belts. That's probably enough for the video, but uh, I don't know. I don't know how many people will tune in just for seat belts, but it's something that has to be done, guys. And uh, I just showed you how to do it. It's kind of boring, but um, anyway, I'll be back. Okay, guys. I think I'm going to end this video uh, before I start on something else. Now I've already started on a few things, like door panels, which I think we'll save. I can't probably see in there. Um, I'm going to take all the door panels off. I mentioned this a few times already, but now it's time. I'm going to recover them door panels, weather strip, paint all the door jams. That's going to take a while. So... We'll get started on that. Um, I noticed I had some carpet in my, some thin carpet in my closet. I'm gonna see if that fits back here. I may put that in too. Um, I also ordered a bunch of stuff. I ordered all the inner and outer, whatever you wanna call them, belt moldings, fuzzies, felt moldings, here and on the inside. So eight pieces. But, like I mentioned before, uh, everything's on delay. And this is actually most, I don't think there's any available from China. There's actually an American company called Repop. And basically, I don't know if it's normal, but you gotta put your order in first and then they make it. So that's what the delay is. So it's not, it's expecting uh, up to eight weeks. It's gonna be in August. August 9th to 15th or something like that. I'm in no big rush So eight of them moldings and then the molding There's only one place that has it that repops uh, I don't even know if you can see here. It's so dark but the molding here for the between the tailgate and the glass It's a one piece. I can buy a couple of pieces and put it together, but I'd rather have just the one piece deal and be done with it. Okay, so they're all coming from the same place all in mid mid August. No big deal. Um, I'm still looking for apparently two door and four door wing window rubber is different. I'm gonna look around, see if I can find I'm not spending a fortune now. See if I can get this new rubber. Oh, I also ordered the uh, window channel. You know that goes in here uh, the window rides on I ordered a uh, set of that for a four-door so should have enough for that that actually be here in three days what else was gonna be here in three days oh the primer I ordered a gallon of primer epoxy primer so I uh, yeah, well maybe maybe do that next video too I want to Strip down this roof to to bare metal prime it and paint it, but we may I may do stripping some of it there uh, Probably do that and Anyway a bunch of little stuff, but mainly I think we'll concentrate on the door panels next next video and then another video, we're going to have to take this whole front end off. I think I'm just going to take it off in pieces. I know it's easy to just take it off in one piece, but I can't lift it and without fucking stuff up. So and it's got to be taken apart anyway. So I'm going to take off every piece, all the, the bumper, the grill, the headlights, the header panel, the core support, the inner wheel wells. Oh, I ordered a bat new battery tray too. That was cheapest, 23 bucks. Uh, 
yeah, fenders, center fenders. We're going to take all this whole front end apart. Uh, coming up, next couple of videos. And then once I get that done, we'll take the uh, all the AC heater core. Uh, it's a little iffy on the heater core, whether it's 68, 69, or the same or not. But uh, So I'd rather probably wait till I get the old one out. That way I can look at a picture. I think I could make it work anyway, even if it's a little bit different. So once we take the front end apart, then we'll start with the uh, front end and the disc brakes and all that stuff on the front end. Just a ton of work to go on this, guys. Uh, but, you know, it ain't gonna, uh, it ain't gonna get done if uh, I don't start on it. And get a little something done every day or every week or whatever. Whatever you got time for, because if you got a project, what's that? I watched that uh, Puddin's Fab Shop there. He's he's pretty funny. And what's his motto there? Your project ain't gonna do get done by sitting on your ass, something like that. But anyway, I know it wasn't very exciting, just seat belts. But you know, it might come in handy for somebody if you want to put in the modern seat belts. It'd be a lot easier. A lot safer and easier to you know buckle up and all that stuff okay so yeah i know i rambled on the beginning and the end of this but uh anyway we got a little job done and we got to move on okay so uh subscribe if you haven't like comment share all that stuff supposed to help out the channel and uh we'll see y'all next video thanks everybody for watching